<clears throat> it is 605? 633. 633. Uh, call to order the Rochester Stockbridge Unified Board Special Meeting. No, Board Retreat. This is draft minutes. Sorry. There we go. Rochester Stockbridge looks exactly the same. Um, Rochester Stockbridge Unified District Board of School Directors regular meeting. Tuesday, January 4th, 2022. First one there. 6.30 p.m. at Stockbridge Campus via Google Meet agenda. Oh, hear ye, hear ye, oye, oye. We have a quorum present. We are missing Patrick Hudson. No, Pat's on the phone. Pat's on the phone? Yep, that's him, that 9-8 number. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, and Robert said he would be calling in, but I don't see him yet. He's on the road back from Massachusetts, so I expect to see him later. Um, do we need an adjustment to the agenda for yes. that? Yeah, you have thank to you. add uh, a dis under discussion under 9.5, the tuition rate, setting your tuition rate for, um, gosh, what's that going to be? 22-23 school year. And then under action items. Well, let's like, let me just yep. get that down. Ten setting tuition rate. Yep. FY22 announced tuition rate. Yep. yep. Setting tuition rate 2223, and that's yep. discussion, not necessarily action. Right, and then action. Five, and then 10.2, you need to take action on it tonight. You do okay. have to take well, we, action. Well, we almost always, okay, we almost always you have take to action on it. our discussion items as opposed to action. I know Dana, um, Dana, whoever his name is, Jamie, it's a holdover from his old way of doing things, but uh, we will do that. We have to do it tonight, thank you. Yep. Have right, to. Tara, it's gotta get done tonight. Unless you want a special meeting between now and the 15th. <laughs> <laughs> right. Nope, thank you. Um, cool, uh, is that good. the only adjustment to the agenda? Are there any other adjustments to the agenda? Patrick? No, I don't know if he's there or not, listening. Um, uh, 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 I, I think we can. No, sorry, I'm here. Okay, good. The only thing I had to say was, uh, I just had a, a quick chat with Jim Shands, and he was, uh, he reached out about the uh, generator, um, and the town. You know, they're they're willing to still pay the maintenance cost. Okay. So we, if we, we can present them with. You've got it as um, an item what, in the principal's what that report. Is. Can we talk about it in the principal's report? Yeah, Cause it's we a, can. Let's bring that up uh, in the principal's report because um, uh, she has an item about that in her report. So that would be a good okay. time to talk Perfect. about that then. Thank you, Patrick. Um, so, yeah, I don't think we need to add that as an agenda item. Um, I'll just uh, – are we all in favor of uh, amending the agenda as at a 9.5 setting tuition rate for 22-23? Show of thumbs yeah. will do for me and an aye from you, Patrick. Aye. Thank you. We're good. Okay. Uh, Amy, you ready for your regular timekeeper duty? Would that be all right? You thought I was going to ask you to make a, a report, didn't you? Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, I, I know that look. Um, okay, consent agenda. Let's say, I, I think, five minutes. Uh, public comment. I don't even know that we have any public here at just this point. Yeah. What's that? I, well, you'll just have to leave it anyway. Yeah, yeah, regardless, yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, board comment. Uh, Robert had a comment. I don't know if he'll be here, but I can make it for him. So let's just give it a five. Uh, reports to the board. Oh, if this if this includes the social emotional data report, then that's going to take a little more. It does. Fifteen. Yeah. Fifteen. Five for superintendent. Uh, five for business manager because that doesn't include the budget. We're doing that later. Right, and then negotiations committee, which would be Jamie, uh, Tara, who's got that for, oh, you, you're on the, that's a bill. What do you think? Five, two less, two, one. <laughs> one. Celebration of learning. Excellent. And we have our guest, Donna Gallant. Gallant, thank you. 61-year-old brain here. Um, and uh, what's, how long is your presentation? Uh, let's say 10. 10 minutes. Perfect. All right, draft four, 22, 23, um, 
15, 20. It's a pretty big one before we approve it next time. Let's, let's give us 20 just to be safe. Annual mailer, and we just talking about that. I think we can cover that in five, maybe. But right, it's really just deciding who's going to take the lead, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, the audit, we have to possibly accept that tonight, right? If we don't have any challenges or qu major questions. Um, Tara, what do you think to present the audit? What do you need? I sent you my memo that outlines it. So unless you have specific questions, it's just a matter of you adopting it and we're going over the management recommendation, which would be less than five minutes. Oh, I didn't, I'm sorry. Oh yes, I did see that. And I, yeah, um, I do have a few questions just because the language is confusing to me, but uh, uh, let's give it 10, give it its due. Uh, mission, vision, work on goal setting. And I'm sorry, Justine, you sent me an email I saw about two weeks ago saying we should have a meeting about this. So we have not moved forward with that. So I'm sorry. Well, I think, I mean, two minutes to say two minutes to talk about another meeting. Yeah, I think so. And then setting tuition rate five minutes, five minutes. Yeah, five's good. Uh, do we have any new hires resignations? Nope. And then public comment and future agenda. Yep, good. Perfect. Okay. Um, and and uh, Amy, don't be shy. Please, you know, tell us when we, we get there. Um, when we get to our limit. Not that we'll stop necessarily, but uh, we want to keep going. Okay. Consent agenda 4.1. We have approved the minutes of Tuesday, December 7th, 2021, regular. 4.2, approve the minutes of Wednesday, December 1st, 2021, special. Approve the minutes uh, tw Tuesday, November 22nd, 2021, special. And 4.4, approve the minutes of Saturday, uh, September 18th, 2021, special retreat. Um, does anybody have, if you don't have specific questions, uh, we can take them as a slot. But if you have specific questions about any one of these, We'll break it up. Um, let me know by uh, indicating your hand if you have a question about any of these notes or Patrick verbally. Okay, then I'll entertain a motion to accept the slate of these minutes from December 7th, December 1st, November 22nd, and September 18th. So moved. As uh, so moved by Bill, seconded please. Second. By Justine. Thank you. All in favor, signify by an aye. 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 And, uh, aye. Or, aye. Good. You guys have it. Robert, aye. Oh, Robert, welcome. Good to see you. Where, where is he on the... the oh, yeah, there he is. Sorry. Nothing. Yeah, the old man here. You haven't been good. Uh, is there any public comment? There being none, we'll move on. Is there any board comment? And Robert, we talked, this might be a moment for you to say your Yes, uh, I, I think I previously re recorded, reported that um, did a walkthrough with uh, Lyle and uh, Norm at uh, the high school, and um, we had uh, you know, found some interesting, interesting things. I, I will be meeting with the, um, the, the People doing the study for the repurpose, the feasibility study for the repurposing. I'd like permission from the, the superintendent of the board to um, talk with Lyle and possibly have him uh, talk with us in our meeting about what he found in the um, in the high school. We we found some significant you know, deficiencies, uh, and I think they there's actually been some some repairs done. Um, so I'm just looking for some uh, permission to uh, to uh, sort of download from Lyle of what what he found, so I can pass it on for the purpose of them estimating what sort of what sort of costs are going to be going forward. Okay, so I I don't see any reason why we need. I think we've approved you conversing with them months ago. So I don't see, I, I appreciate your uh, rigor in this, but I don't see any reason, unless somebody else has a reason, why we need to approve it again. I think Robert, no, I you're... Think well, it, oh, hey, Amy, I what? The only reason. Wait, Amy first. Okay. I just wanted to say that I do continue to support 
this effort um, as Robert is speaking. So I do continue to support what Great. I, I, I do too. Um, I think the more communication, the better. Um, anybody have a problem? Speak now or forever hold your peace. Great. Robert, you're good to go. Keep us informed, please. Okay. Uh, okay. And the oh. reason I, I ask is it may involve, you know, using up some of his time, which I'm sure he's being reimbursed by by the, the school or the SU. Okay. I think that's that's exactly what, the going toward this objective of what we want, mm -hmm. this is a very, very good way to spend our money, is to have these people talking so that report comes back in the best favorable light. That's what we want. We've made that very clear. Good. Is there any further board comment? Um, I just want to make a quick thing um, uh, to uh, staff, teachers, um, administration, sorry. Um, it was a crazy November, December there was almost every week it felt like there was a new report coming out of isolations. And uh, I just, well done. You just did really, really well. Thanks. And kept us open and kept us safe. And uh, I just was very proud of our schools and our SU, but our schools in particular. So thank you for that. Thank you. Know? you. Well, well said. Yep. Uh, good. Let's move on. Board report. Let's go to the superintendent. So we said you have your board report in front of you. And the only thing he really wanted to draw your attention to was the last page of it, where it talks about the waiting study that's being ha yes. happening in the legislature. And he just yeah. wanted you guys to really make sure you took a minute to kind of process. I do remember at the SU meeting them talking about that it was it wasn't great for all the school the districts of the SU, it's good but that it's good side. for us. It brings down our per pupil mm -hmm. tax rate um, by pretty significantly, yeah. a decrease of fifteen point nine percent, right? Okay. Percent or uh, percent? it depends which proposal, but um, oh, I see. Because it doesn't, there's no percentage here, but I assume that's a percentage. Oh, yep. I yeah, believe okay. that's a percentage. So there's no that percentage. That 15.9 yeah. is a percentage, as the other yeah. ones are there. So. Good. It's well, nothing, nothing formal yet, but it's good that they're talking about it. Well, and I guess anybody who's listening to this, it wouldn't hurt to write your legislators and tell them how you feel about this, because it's obviously good. Bill? I was going to say, um, you know, the numbers look good for most of our SU communities mm -hmm. relative to the corrected wane. Um, and I think there's a lot of uh, consensus that the current weight system was flawed. Mm -hmm. And they had a consultant team come in and they've identified that, came up with two possible models of correcting it. One is to come up with a corrected uh, formula mm -hmm. and the second one which is uh, Jamie's got proposal number two is to kind of establish a fund Great. that would be distributed to those communities that have been under counted as far as equalized students um, I think there's a growing feeling that the proposal number one is the one that if the legislature adopts a model that has correct factors in it and a, 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 a um, revenue source that we're better able to count on that on the long run. The problem with setting up a kitty is the kitties can be as remember as when we were kids uh, when we went into the kitchen and when our parents weren't looking we took those graham crackers or whatever the ace is and we and that's the problem with the second proposal, which on the short term will help us, but maybe not the long run. The other thing to keep in mind is it's not clear, and there's a webinar put on by the Vermont School Board Association this Monday at 12 to talk to the leaders of the um, of this study and the committee that, uh, that, that presented something to the legislature when 
the legislature will act. And uh, as much as we hope that they'll act uh, uh, promptly to help us in our budgeting, there are other communities that, and I would suggest they're the, possibly the more affluent communities that might have some feelings that, no, let's study this some more and let's kick the can down the road. So mm -hmm. uh, we can't count on it, but uh, I agree with our superintendent that things look good and if the legislature does its duty, uh, um, communities like Rochester and Stockbridge will be benefited in our taxpayers. Very good. Uh, any other questions at this point for the superintendent's report? Being none, let us move on principles, including social emotional data report. All right. So starting with the principles report, um, first of all, just kind of some focal points to highlight slash that we're not in that. Um, our new RSUD website will launch this Friday. Oh. It is, I just saw, and the only thing that needs to be added are a couple of pictures, but um, it just got the new link this afternoon. So it's pretty exciting and very user friendly and exciting that we're going to be like an RSUD website with options to go to Stockbridge or Rochester. So it can be one update with a lot of different uh, information mm -hmm. pertaining to all of us. Mm -hmm. Amy. What is the address? It's going to be, oh, I'm going to get it wrong because I've only seen it once. Uh, <laughs> I might have to forward it to you guys as the board, just so I don't get it yep. wrong. Um, but I believe it's rsudschools.org. But don't hold me. I'll get it forwarded to you to make sure you all have the right one. Um, just so, a, oh. Yeah, no. Well, well, just a question as I looked at it. Um, when I was thinking about the single website, do we want to call ourselves anything else? We sort of never really took that on and it wasn't the time to take that on back then but we're a much more unified organization than we were back when the merger happened and I just wonder it's it's I mean I could see lots of reasons not to because you know it's just and I, I get to these reasons when I get to, when we talk about the budget what I think our goal is for the budget this year anyway let's raise the question let's go on we can talk about it another time yeah um, so I don't see anybody going, yes, 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 yes. So I think that's a good reason to just raise Maybe the that will come up in our, in our vision committee, uh, you know, our goals committee meeting. Sure. Um, <laughs> you can think of some really, really bad names right now, suddenly. Anyway. That we won't, maybe yeah, steps, <laughs> Really, steps, really right? awful names. Um, um, good. And then we are at that mid-year assessment point, so the window is open where we're getting ready to start some um, assessments. So the next meeting will have some academic data to present out to folks. Um, and then I think kind of the other pieces that are getting ready to go um, is Winter Wellness will launch next week. Mm -hmm. um, as long as health and safety conditions are met is what I'm going to put in there. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just want to say a shout out to both communities and some local farms. We were able to put together 100 food boxes between both uh, campuses for all our families to go home with for the holidays. And that was through farm to school money, some local trustee money, and some just donations and other items that we had. So it was great to be able to do and spread to both communities this year. So. Yeah, that was amazing. And, it and a lot of physical work <laughs> with was. you all. I saw that. that was it was, lot. and there was a lot of people, even Jamie and Tara mm -hmm. helped us put it together last mm -hmm. Tuesday when they were over visiting, so that was great. That's great. Nice going. Mm -hmm. Thank so, you so much. It was awesome to do, so I, um, it took everybody, for sure. So um, I think those are kind of the big things outside of the report that I just wanted to make sure to highlight. Um, just a clarification, um, I see that the trust structure is going ahead. Is there a reason why, I mean, I know some of the government funding took a while. Mm -hmm. I just was, 
I was sort of hoping they'd be done by this time of year so we'd be able to use them. Uh, by um, the time we got approval, he was already working on some other ones. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's a good one. Aiden and okay. I have been yep. working together pretty closely yep. on that. No, that's good. Yep. Um, oh, just one tiny thing. Yeah. Um, I did notice that they plowed to right in front of the, I, yeah. You know, yeah. And that was just seems a little like, I've got don't it. use this. Um, good. So well, good. I had to corral some people out of it today. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, good. that's that's a good sign. The kids Excellent. think it's fascinating that there's no snow under those two spots. <laughs> so they're very engaged in it. It's pretty that's, that's intriguing. That's great. That's great. Um, good. No, that's great. That's, yeah. that's what I have. Anybody else have questions for our principals? Just thank you. You're, well, thank you guys. Mm -hmm. Um, so I have a question. Oh, yeah, yes. but th I don't have a question, but this was the time I do believe Pat was going to talk about a uh, generator. Yes, thank you very much. Absolutely. Go, Pat. Yeah, um, no, so I just had a quick conversation with Jim Shams and uh, to kind of reiterate the discussion we had when I joined them in their meeting a couple months back. Um, and he's putting together his report and, and uh, town budget for the year and <clears throat> wanted to have a line item to um, okay. to uh, basically pay for the maintenance cost of the generator that was kind of the deal that that they were willing to um, provide uh, those costs associated so if we can get I don't know I know that in the um, original proposal from Brookfield, they kind of had a, a, a section paragraph on, you know, the different options for service um, uh, and maintenance uh, after install. So I just wasn't sure which route we were going to go um, with that, if we've decided that or whether we need to decide that and then uh. pass that information along to the select board. Yeah, I think Lyle gave me a recommendation and we took that route. And I want to say it's like the $750 route, Pat, but don't quote me. Okay. Um, but I can get that for you and I'll send it to you and Jim. Okay, that sounds good. Is that the best way to do that so he can include it as he needs? $750 per yeah. month? Or per no, month? I think it's an annual service. Yeah, yeah, yeah gotcha. yearly. And we don't have that on our budget, so we're not double accounting. That no, for, it but. is not currently in the budget so okay i can do that so but I, we, I, that just sticks out in my brain but i want to double check with lyle because no, I, I, that that number sounds familiar okay so i'll get that and i'll send it to you and jim and then you guys can move forward as you need okay perfect does that work and, it, and it, if it goes forward, then it will be in the report, hopefully approved at their town meeting in March. Right. March and then we will not need it to in our budget. Gotcha. Into our budget. But we'll actually have some time to know right. that for sure. Good, because okay. if obviously if it gets voted down, then we gotta adjust. Then we have to adjust. Yep. Good. All right. Anything else for the principal? Oh no, uh, social emotional. Sorry. Yeah. So social emotional. Um, so this data that is in front of you, it's kind of a bunch of different breakdowns of all the data together. So it's broken down by day of the week, how often an office discipline referral is um, given. It's both campuses combined, K through six, mm -hmm. um, because if you start to break out like gender, it becomes a little identifiable, mm -hmm. um, as well as just different types of behavior we're seeing and um, where we're seeing it, when we're seeing it, what frequency, and um, by gender. Mm -hmm. And it compares last year, the whole year, to this year at this point. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of some things, and I kind of highlighted these in the terms, but I want to mm -hmm. stress one thing that's a little different than when we all went to school. Is like the office discipline referral is not the consequence. <laughs> it's how we document behaviors when they happen after redirections occurred, after we've tried several different strategies. It's not like a detention slip is sometimes what adults equate it to. Mm -hmm. 
and it's really just for us to use as a tool and us being staff faculty and staff of when we need to track what behaviors are going on so for instance if you look at the playground there's quite this uptick in playground office discipline referrals well that tells us we need to reteach our expectations around playground and maybe even hone in on say how to use something about stop talk and walk away versus maybe getting heated and putting our you know pushing mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. happens with younger kids when they can't express their emotions mm -hmm. so that's just one example but that's what we use this data for there's a whole separate section on the office discipline referral where we talk about what the consequences would be parent contact loss of a privilege mm -hmm. change in a seating assignment meeting with myself um so it's it's i just want to set the scene that way because that's something that's different for folks to think about um and i think the big thing uh two bigger things on here that really have stood out to us are one we do have an uptick in these referrals on the playground so that's a focus of what's known as our pbis team or our positive mm -hmm. behavior intervention systems is what pbis stands for mm -hmm. which is a team that meets once a month and um, we are seeing the number of referrals start to tick down which is good because it means expectations have been put in place we are reteaching expectations right now because we've been on vacation for a little bit. Um, and the bigger one that will continue to be something we're gonna have to work at as a whole group um, and really set an action goal around in my book is the difference in males versus females receiving um, these referrals for behavior. And could, well, are you ready for? Yeah, so yeah. that's kind of, all of that. <laughs> well, it's a lot of it. Well, I saw good news in the majors. Yeah. Seem down. They do. Majors they um, mostly seem down. Uh, defiance, I guess, would be the only one. That, but uh, otherwise, that's that's a good. I mean, if you're in minor and it's disruption, minor physical. And, yeah, and one thing that's kind of tricky about major versus minor is a minor is like there's been several redirections and tries. And then it can kick to a major when it's the same type of behavior that's been documented multiple times. Okay. So it's not that it's necessarily worse, it's more that it's repeated. Mm -hmm. And when we see that happening, one of the things that tends to happen is it's usually a very specific time of day it's happening. So we're able to really hone in and develop a specific plan to help support that kiddo or kiddos to be able to um, succeed because mm -hmm. that's what it's really all about so that can be a piece that sometimes makes that data look a little deceiving um i'm jumping in with a second question who else has got anything to ask here sort of looking uh, we got bill i got a comment um one is that this reflects uh, this, these are difficult times and and here we are some of us are geezers, and we're having a difficult time in behaving ourselves. You can imagine when you're elementary age students, and they're reflecting what they see on TV or Facebook or whatever the case is. So that's the first reality. The second one is that our system under our leadership and the team that Lindy's put together with teachers and, and interventionalists and, and behavioral uh, support team, um, you've, you've got metrics so you can figure out what's happening and then you can analyze with those metrics what can we do how do we better intervene or whatever the case is it's very hard to be effective if you don't have the metrics mm -hmm. you can talk about but it's awfully hard so I commend the staff both in developing the matrix uh, the, the metrics and then having a team and a protocol to to tackle it and it, mm -hmm. it gives it me confidence that as we go through the school year, these numbers are going to decline. I must say, on, on bullying, even though it's a teeny bit, none. Um, major disrespect, uh, major physical. So these are things, I, and, and uh, Ethan talked about that, but 
that's the, that's the good news. And um, I just want to come into what you're doing and, and reinforce the importance of what you're doing because you're, it seems like you've got the spotlights on this. And it's not only the, the, the kids that are acting out, they don't know better, but it's, it's, the, it's their fellow classmates and that can affect the, the whole atmosphere of the classroom. So um, this is important. Uh, you're on top of it and I appreciate what you're doing. Other questions? Or comments, Robert or Patrick? I'm all set. Um, I just have one question. If do you ever think about with the male female? If you're curious about it, um, and maybe this is a can of worms, and I shouldn't go there, but uh, uh, the gender of the teacher or the person sending. Um, I do think that that is a factor. Okay. Is the way I'll put that. I think yeah. um, when you break it down by grade, it's very telling mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. um, which, like I said, I can't do because no, it's not. identifiable. Yep. But when we, that's how specific we look at it mm -hmm. as a team, mm -hmm. and it's it's very interesting to see. I think it has a lot to do with language and yep. how we, you know, there's this book called The Power of Our Words. And it's something we're going to um, eventually probably look at next year. I'm not going to add one more thing to anybody's plate right now. But um, it's something we've talked about because I do think there's sometimes a communication barrier mm -hmm. that plays a huge factor into it. And I also think sometimes similar genders tolerate some different things from each other than that is not so necessarily so when it's different genders. So, I, that's my own theory. I, I'm going to put that disclaimer out there. No, no, no. I, I, I'm glad you're looking at that because I think, I'm just glad you're looking at it. The other thing, I, I'm very glad you're thinking of talking about language because I remember when, back when I went to my very first school board meeting years ago, I saw the school board doing school speak at a concerned mother and she had no idea what they were saying right. and she freaked because she mm -hmm. had no idea what they were talking about about her child. And she, and I, I understood it, and it was fascinating. I'd never forgotten it. But it was all about language and how we talk in these, you know, we think that everybody <laughs> talks like school board talk or whatever. And it just is not true. Not to mention disciplinary talk from the home to the classroom. Right. There's a whole different language. Well, There's all kinds of things that might be there. Just kids. And one of the trainings, and I talked about this in my principal's report too, is we've now done two parts of direct instruction training with Janie Feinberg. And she talks about and reemphasizes, and I'm a firm believer in it, that everything is a reflection of us in the yep. directions and instruction we give as the adult. Yep. If a kid isn't following a direction or isn't learning, it's because something we did or said. Yep. And how we communicated that. And that was like the key point of emphasis that we've talked about as a group. Like think about your language and how that impacts whether a student understood the directions, could follow the directions, or actually learned in the situation. Mm -hmm. And we see it in our social emotional data, and we'll see it in our academic data too. Good. But I did think of you when I put my key terms. <laughs> <laughs> Just one. Oh, no. Sorry. Uh, question for Lindy. Uh, we're going to talk about the budget um, uh, very soon, but I guess my question, since we're talking about this now, does the budget reflect the, the, the needs, the staffing, whatever, the, the, the backing you need to be able to take this on successfully? Yep, so there's something called a BEST grant that we access quite a few funds from, which sends teachers to uh, training that we do, as well as supports the data, the uh, data system that we collect with. Yep. Um, and University of Vermont has put together this PBIS network, uh, positive behavior intervention supports and systems. And they offer free, all sorts of free webinars and trainings that we access. What you'll see in the budget, and I can point it out when we get there, is money towards also celebrations, because we like to celebrate successes. Mm -hmm. And that's what we use a lot of that money for. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for asking. Speaking of which, I still have 200 bucks that I've never given you. <laughs> from, the right truck, the funny money. from the truck. From the truck.
So yeah, I gotta yeah. get that. So I have a question. Before yes, we yeah, Justine. On. Yeah, I'm not. Oh. We're not moving on. Oh, okay. Not yet. I have a question. You're good. Um, is outdoor learning considered a special for this purpose? It is. Now I can uh, only because the number was so low in the number of referrals in across all specials. Um. Like it's, yeah. it's not even, I don't remember what the total is. I'll look, hold on. Yeah, like it's maybe six or seven all together. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, I just wondered if that was lumped in there. It is. There's quite a conversation about where it should go though <laughs> when we were making it, but. Good. Any further questions on social emotional data? If not, let us move ahead to the business manager, 7.3. Thank you. So you have my report that outlines the upcoming due date mm -hmm. in January for both the business office and the school food authority. And then the rest of my discussion items are later on in your agenda. So if there's any questions on due dates or reports, I'll have to answer them. Um, just... I don't know. Uh, how 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 is it? How's the? Uh, this is an SU really question. But how are you feeling going forward into budget season this year as opposed to years before? Uh, budget season is stressful. <laughs> but is it is it less? <laughs> what I'm hoping to hear is that it's a little less stressful. Is because things seem to keep getting more organized at the business office, and you know. and where we're at with closing out the prior year versus where we have been since I joined the supervisory union in 2019. Uh, our so continued cool. challenge mm -hmm. is the agency of education. They right. continue to delay in meeting their requirements to get mm -hmm. us calculations and wow. actual finalized calculations that we could take to the bank. So that continues to be a challenge and I don't foresee there being any substantial change there over the next year or so, just based on how fast legislation seems to be changing. That feels like there's a letter to the editor on that. <laughs> you know? Because that's what you got to do. You got to write to your legislators and say, hey, or the governor, and say, hey, your organization is not efficient. Mm. Yeah. Good. Okay. Uh, Great. Any questions on the report? And at least, Tara, at least we're winnowing down, because the list used to be a lot bigger of all the things that were a problem. And if it's just them, okay. That's like the weather. Very good. For being none, thank you so much, Tara. Thank you, Principal. For you, I forgot to thank you. Uh, negotiations Committee Bill. Yes, um, we've had one meeting uh, with the Teachers Association. Uh, and so just tell me, which contract, or what do you... What some we, of the teachers... Um, professional staff. And professional. This, and this is the one where we agreed contract. to a one-year, or two, no, no two-year with the last time. Didn't we just... No, we I just, don't remember. Just tell me what the... Which the last contract. one was the Power Professionals. So we yes. had a two-year contract. But two year. They got a two-year. Um, but we, the last time we negotiated... No. And we'll, we, we'll, we, we yeah. need to get, negotiate whether the contract's going to be for one year or for two years, and that's something that's going to be on the table. I would. Um, anyway, we had an initial meeting, and we exchanged ground rules. I think we've got a consensus. My sense is I've been in negotiation a long time that we've got a g good sense and respect on both sides that uh, we want to do business and we want to be fair um, to, to everyone. Uh, and shortly we'll be meeting again and having the exchange of proposals from both sides and maybe the initial explanations of those and then we'll be proceeding. Um, we hope that we can get this done um, in a timely fashion for both sides and uh, that would be our hope. Yep. Good. Any questions for the negotiating team? There being none, we are ready for the fun. Great. <laughs> Is this part of your... No, that's for my kiddos. But you wrote the cards, right? 
Oh yeah, I'm, we're doing a book tasting tomorrow. Oh. I have a book tasting happening for fourth, fifth, and sixth graders tomorrow. So that's what that's the beginnings of. But that's not what I had planned for <laughs> no, you. No, but I want a but, picture of that and like. And maybe can you put a time. picture of that on the website. That's that's just amazing. Well, it's kind of there's other things on the table. So wait well, till tomorrow a, when okay, I have it set okay. up in the morning. But but <laughs> I mean I just this I just. Oh, it's pretty cool. It's really amazing. What a great idea. Uh, Courtney would just Yeah, I did, actually thought of her. Actually, yeah. when I was doing it. She, yeah, you should send her an email and this idea. So anyway, sorry. Sure. I take up your time. So can I trouble you for that slideshow? The, the guy, four, five, six literacy one? Yeah, there you go. Sure thing. That's more exciting. Sorry. No. So cool. at Stockbridge, we have a fourth grade literacy sure. class and then a five, six literacy class. So I put a little slideshow together yesterday just to give just to show you some highlights of our kiddos in reading. I'm gonna to jump to the next slide. So a part of literacy is guided reading groups, interactive read aloud and responding, mini lessons, word study, teacher reading aloud and the kids responding, their independent reading and responding, and also book clubs. Can, oh, yeah. can I ask you about that stuff yet or sure. not? What, is, what, it, what does response mean? Meaning that they're not just reading, they're reading and then thinking and then responding to what they're doing. Okay. Via writing, right? Via writing. Via yeah. writing. Okay. So a part That's... of the um, part of the brilliance of this year, I'll say, is that <laughs> <laughs> is that when the need for reading interventionists came up this year, and Lindy and I talked about it, and I took on that role, I needed to give something up, mm -hmm. and Maureen was looking for more, our math and science teacher, so she was willing to start learning how to, uh, well, not start learning, but teaching writing, so mm -hmm. I'm supporting her with teaching writing, but our kids are doing just as much writing in reading class as well, so mm -hmm. they don't even, I don't even know how much they realize it, but they're getting reading <laughs> and writing in both places, Great. and a lot more writing is mm -hmm. happening. So That's we're seeing just huge, what we said as yeah. an object objective. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's been great. So I um, am focusing on just a few different parts of the literacy, gotcha. just to have you see it. So Excellent. one of the things that I think is really awesome is guided reading. And here's some sample books that you guys in person get to see. So this is some of the books that we may use in guided reading. Guided reading it is flexible groupings based on where kids are currently reading at, and I'm constantly assessing them. I meet with all groups four days a week. There's two groups in fourth grade and three groups in five, six. Um, how it works is a group gets together with me. Everybody else is independently working, and I'll explain how that happens. And the group that's reading with me, um, after introducing the text and talking about the text, they're all able to read independently on their own, and then I read here, each kiddo read, so that I can give them feedback or support as needed. Mm -hmm. So everybody gets individual attention right where they're at with where they are reading, which is awesome. And because of Janie, we mentioned Janie with direct instruction already, and because of my learning from her, one of my groups, my lowest end group, are in these books as well, but I am supporting them in more of a DI approach, which DI. is DI meaning direct instruction. I got you, thank you. So for like DI, you wouldn't ever have a kid just take a book and read it and think that they could, you know, successfully and get every word. And it's important that they don't read words wrong and think that's how the word, what the word really is. So for those kiddos that I'm reading a more DI approach, so they read only two or three sentences, we read it together. So it's, I'm able to be flexible. We're able to be flexible with these sorts of groupings. Mm -hmm. And then I have a student who's reading above even the highest level so she reads with that group, so she's still a part of a group reading, but then she also reads a couple of books a week on her own at her level as well. So that everybody is really, every student is getting supported right where they're at with reading and pushing them, keep pushing them up and up and up. Okay. So that's been successful. Um, they all read about two books a week, so this is what those books look like. This is where, this is our current fourth grade. The books that you're holding is the current fourth grade on one end of the room. You hold it because the camera's not on me, so if you could hold them up just so they could see a little bit. You guys have to come and see these in person. You can yeah. see them in Rochester is this, also. Is this Fontes and Pinot? This is Fontes and Pinot. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Which Great. has it. So this is, I don't know where I'm pointing this, but. <laughs> so this is some of the books. But they're super engaging, nonfiction, um, as well as fiction, all different kinds of text. And then this shows, this is my kiddo that's at the highest level, and so that's a book that she might be reading. Mm -hmm. But the kids are really engaged with that, and which is exciting. 
So here's some pictures of them in guided reading right in this room. And they, and they love the books. Another part of the literacy program is an interactive read aloud, which is also an FMP, FMP meaning Fountas and Pinnell. And in this, there are awesome text sets. So these are whole packs of books. Here's a set. This is fourth grade text, and this is called a text set of figuring out who you are. That's the name of the text set for them. Oh, I see. So it's a group of books. It's a group of books. Text yeah. sets. A text I see. sets. Yeah. Got you. Mm. And then here's one for five, one. six, and this one is under the category of empathy. So I got that one. This is empathy. So I might want to take some of these home. Of yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> I love the books. Looking at wow. his books, this is great. So they're beautiful books. They're mm -hmm. awesome tech sets. They work really well. But what I found, especially last year when I was part of the year in person and part of the year working with virtual kids, was how can I have every kid have access to those books when I can't always be with them to read them to mm -hmm. them? And I need to work with guided reading groups, so I'm needing mm -hmm. them to be independent. So can I trouble you to show that history, historical fiction slideshow? So something that I do is take the books and create a slideshow for my kids that they can have access to, which has, and you can zip through When that. you say access to on their computer? On their computers, yeah. Okay. So but they all, can available. all get into Google Slides. And I teach, it's something that's called mini lessons. So a mini lesson is like 10 to 15 minutes, mm -hmm. teaching one particular concept that you want them to then take that concept and, and put into practice. So we, in December, we were really focusing on historical fiction. So these are the, that up there is a picture of the book, one of the books that would be in the text set. Mm -hmm. And then I find somebody, or I do it myself if I can't find somebody, who's reading the book. Sometimes it's the author or another teacher reading the book and have the link so the kids can click on the book. Trouble you to do that. And have access to any, any slide is fine. Click on the book itself, and then there's a link to the book. And you don't have to. Oh. So they can click on that, and then they can hear the book. So and that also supports kids. And I've been working on it for about a week. Don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> and then that also supports kiddos where the book might be more than they might be able to read, but they can listen to the book. So the mm -hmm. books are here. Kids can pick them up and read them, or they can listen to them. And then they are responding. So then there's some prompts that I give them. The kids always have choices. We love choices. So respond to the texts in with one of those questions. So that's a part of what interactive read aloud looks like. Beautiful books. Kids are engaged. Slideshows there so everybody can be independently working. That's one of the pieces they can be working on while I'm with a guided reading group. And everybody's engaged and reading great books. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so here I'm going to, if we can come back to the slideshow, the, um, yes, that one, great. So that's interactive, read aloud, and students responding. And we're going to go to the next one, which is just some pictures of kiddos working, mm -hmm. some on computers, some having a physical book in their hands. So they do read on computer, some. They do read well, on the yeah. computer, mm -hmm. some. They, this is also something that they can read with a friend, so that can be paired things, so it doesn't have to be everything is independent. So it's one of those places where they have, although most of them do do it independently, mm -hmm. there's only a couple of them that might do it together. This is a picture of some students in book club. Mm -hmm. I've been doing book clubs in the humanities class that I teach, which is a couple of days a week. Um, and that's more student choice, choosing what it is that they want to read and giving them lots of choices of what that might look like, and then me supporting them all in class with that. That's a way that I also target history and social studies, and so there's um, beautiful books that we have related to that. And um, you'll see in one of the pictures, to, here's one of the books. Um, this is a Smithsonian's North America book, which opens up to be eight feet long. Oh. So that is super fun <laughs> to read, <clears throat> and especially to do it with pairs, and then students mm -hmm. create, do oh, yeah, research related to different things in history, and create slideshows, and all kinds of great learning stuff. Mm -hmm. 
So that's just one of the history texts that we use. And I love that one because it's North America, so there's no boundaries that humans have made up. It's just kind of thinking about oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. people and animals and geology and all that's happened in our continent from the beginning of Earth's history. Um, humanities is also where we um, learn about civics and citizenship and all that sort of stuff. So the other thing I wanted to highlight are mini lessons. So mini lessons are some things that you would imagine happens in reading grammar and genre studies and looking at writer's craft and things like that, theme and plot. But this year I've also incorporated, because of Janie's training of, of me and what I've learned from her is um, some comprehension skills and strategies through some of the resources that she shared. So this is another place where students are getting voc vocabulary and parts of speech, but also deduction and classification and reasoning and inference. And the, the resource that I'm using is actually focusing on body systems, which I love because I love to teach and think it's so important to learn about the brain and your body and how it functions. Mm -hmm. So many things we need to know. No one about your own body and how it <laughs> operates. Seems pretty vital. Um, so that's actually in that DI piece as well. So that's a part of what I'm doing, incorporating that this year for the first time is direct instruction comprehension skills. And many lessons also happen with word study stuff. Um, the first thing up there is morphographs, which are parts of words. That's one of the things I've learned from Janie too, that if you learn parts of words, you'll learn to spell more words than just learning how to spell words. So if you mm -hmm. can spell the parts and you understand mm -hmm. what those parts mean, those morphographs mean, then you can spell more. So, a lesson in that. Yeah. yeah. So I just want to say that things change every year here at Stockbridge. We do things a little, <laughs> a little different, a little better, I feel, each year. And that's what it looks like this year. Another part that I wanted to highlight is just um, yeah. read aloud and response. So this is one of the best parts of teaching, I think, is being able to read <laughs> to mm -hmm. kids and engage kids with reading. Yep. And there really isn't time for that to happen in literacy class, unfortunately, even with as much time as we may have. First of all, I don't have four, five, six together, so I don't have them all together to do that. So Lindy and I had talked about this summer. I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to do it during lunch. I'm going to do it when they're eating, because they, they need to not be chatting mm -hmm. or mass off and eating once we're inside. Um, it might, the smaller school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right. As opposed to Rochester, right. that'd be hard. There's so many. Yeah. Right. There's there's sixteen of them. Like they're not in the lunchroom. I keep thinking they're in the lunchroom. Right? And we did we ate yeah. outside as long as we possibly right. could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the only one the kids were like, like, please, can we come inside? To eat? <laughs> <laughs> but we were outside most of the time. So that's awesome. And the kids they they love it, which is really great. So I read to them then. I read to them in humanities. Some mm -hmm. we participate in global read aloud, which is literally books that are read around the world all at the same time. So there's all mm. these classes all around the world reading the same books. So we participate in that the last number of years here at Stockbridge. And this year I was able to find pen pals, took a long time, but found pen pals for them in Winnipeg, Canada, which actually was where the book took place. But it was a four, five, six class. Mm. So who can imagine that I would actually find a four, five, six class, but we found them. So there's a picture there that shows the kids with Google Meet, because we meet with our pen pals sometimes. And um, I'm cool. just learning how to, and you just taught me <laughs> how to do breakout rooms oh, so I can yeah. run the kids in smaller groups and break out with an adult with them in each yeah. of the breakout rooms. Cool. So we're navigating that. But our Canadian friends don't put their screens on so much. So Stockbridge kiddos were a little bit like, hey, I want to see Faye. <laughs> so put the screen on. So this is also a place where the kids do lots of art and to have different choices related to responding to the text and stuff. And we just read, that's a cover of the book right there, The Barren Grounds, and there's a part two in the series. So the kids were begging before Christmas, like, can we read part two? Can we read part two? And sure enough, we got it. We started it today. We're reading part two. Even though I really wanted to get into a different genre, they just wanted to stay there. So that's where we'll be. <laughs> so that's a, what a read aloud looks like. And I think that's it. Just some more pictures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The kids working. And then that last page, too. Yeah, so that's just a quick highlight. Uh, this is amazing. It's great. And uh, is this... Is there, is there the equivalent of this in Rochester? We're getting closer. Good. That's, fine. That's the way I have to do And, yeah. and I, I have to say, like, in Rochester, for the first time this year, I have felt like there's more 
connection than there has been before. And right. I certainly feel like my counterpart there, Ron, is definitely into like, okay, great, let's do it. Let's great, you know, so he's, great, 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 great. He's definitely there, which is really Because I think really that's, that's really what we're... He's just, a, where I would say it's different is this is his first year with all the material mm -hmm, and things. Mm -hmm. And, and Don has yeah, done yeah, like an I awesome don't. job dissecting and yep. all about what's worked, what hasn't worked. Okay, but I haven't yeah. always had teachers who are like, yeah, come on. Oh, so yeah, he's yeah. saying, yeah, come on. I'm like, okay. That's, <laughs> that's great. Them. Mm -hmm. um, uh, do you ever do anything with, and this is my, you know, performance thing, this is what I do, is <laughs> the musicality of language? The musicality of language. There is a music to every line of literature that huh. gives it meaning. Only in like iambic pentameter type stuff. But not even that. Yeah. I mean, every line, you pick up a book here, and there is a line, a way of reading that line so that it has meaning as opposed to um, flat well, or definitely wrong. reading with inflection. And yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's it. And that sort of stuff. And yeah. that's, it's, it's, a, it's, 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 prof I mean, it's profound for me because it's, you can, you can learn how to understand a line, line as you're reading it mm -hmm. and how to communicate that. So I don't know. It's my, it's my little pet <laughs> thing that I'm good at. And, uh, um, mm -hmm. uh, but I just hope that it, it comes into the, mm -hmm. the classroom because it can, to have a kid standing up tall and proud and holding a book and reading it with expression right. to his class. Well, right now we've just started poetry since we've been back from break. So that will absolutely lend itself to all of that. Absolutely. And I had wow. some cousins actually reading uh, together today. To <laughs> and they were devouring a book and really into it. But then they came to a poem and they couldn't quite get yep. the vibe of how it should go. So they actually came to me. I was with a guided reading group and they were like, when you have a minute, can you read this to us? Great. <laughs> Which was awesome, because they knew it needed to sound a certain way, and they couldn't quite get it. So that's cool. it was great. Good. Any other questions for our listeners? Not Amy? a question. I just want to say thank you very much for your presentation. Um, it is really wonderful to see this stuff happening in our schools, and uh, I'm very excited about what you're doing. So um, thank you, and keep up the good work. You're welcome. Thank you. Bill? Yeah, I was going to say that this is the core of what we're all about. Mm -hmm. We're talking about making a difference and reading and writing mm -hmm. and getting kids turned on. And can't we have book number two and poetry and being open to it? That, um, I don't know what anything's more exciting in, mm -hmm. in my life. And I want to thank you personally mm -hmm. and um, Jenny Feinberg and Direct Instruction. And I think, and Lindy for making this happen mm -hmm. and having the talent and yeah. and picking the right talent that can make it happen job. and that, that's you and i hope that that, that moves over to rochester rochester is ex mm -hmm. um this is the nice thing about being unified that we can share ideas and and programs that work or don't work and talent and be a team yeah and uh, i see it happening but i uh, uh, this is this this is out of sight. So, well, thank and, you. And Jamie's vision is that we're not just sharing this enthusiasm and structure between camp, but among the whole SU. Right. That you're getting yes. together with your yes. counterparts in other schools mm -hmm. and saying, La Mariposa is really great for this particular group because mm -hmm. it talks about this or something like that, or it doesn't have as many pictures or and, something like that. And the other thing is, it's enthusiasm, energy mm -hmm. combined with. Mm -hmm knowledge, expertise, and to create a change, mm -hmm. getting our kids to be able to read and write. And that's the exciting thing. We got the energy and the program and the instructors and our leaders uh, to do it. And wow, we have, we've got a ways to go here. We know that. And, uh, but this is, this is very heartening. Thank you. Well, and, and Amy, I think you're the only one who's been on this board long enough. But remember the harangues about Fontas and Pinnell that Janie would bring to the board meetings. You remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and it's just great to see that it actually works. That it's really good that it's a great resource we have and that with well, her instructions. And I think, that other, piece, <laughs> and I think okay. that other piece that Donna is probably about to chime in on as well is that Donna has implemented both within her general literacy block to hit on the pieces that Fontes and Pinnell 
does not support okay. for every kiddo. Right. Good. So she's truly seen what Jamie was talking about. Okay, great. Right. Where That's good to hear. Thank there you. There are some oh, drops, and jump in, Donna, where there are some drops specifically around word study, phonemic awareness, decoding yeah. ability. So being able to actually read a word. So something that F and P yeah. Fountas and Pinnell might say is okay is for kids to take a picture walk. Look at the pictures, and that helps you figure out the words. No. <laughs> That's not a way to learn how to read at all. So you need to learn how to sound out a word. You need to learn those sounds first to be able to sound out a word. Gotcha. So that's, that's not an acceptable This is very to good teach. to hear. Yeah, so yeah. that's not acceptable. The specific and that would be, criticism. Yeah, 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 in, yeah. in F and P, that's one of the strategies. Right. Oh, there's many strategies to teach kids to read. That's one of the strategies that you can use. No, that's not a strategy. That's a crutch that they kind of go to, and then they're reading a picture, and they're not actually learning to read the words. So having that super structure of DI in terms of this is what's necessary for kids to learn how to reading, how to read, and then incorporating that into the general ed is huge. Yeah. Is our money? Oh, what the hell? But Go ahead. where F and P is amazing is the diversity in the text, right. both in guided reading, interactive read aloud. There's a wide variety there, mm -hmm. and it's truly updated offerings to kiddos that was non-existent before we put that into play. It was books that we probably all read when we were in school for reading mm -hmm. groups and book clubs. Not there, there's not some amazing ones, but in a time where we're using literature to explore other parts of our world, our country, our culture, our diversity, F and P really brings that. It does. For right. all Absolutely. of our mm -hmm. That is it's well worth the investment that is for the books alone. Great. Right. And, right. The, and the resources to go with the teachers to be able to teach mm -hmm. that. Right. But in other areas, not as much. But yes. identifying that and But being this is what you've learned in the last two years, three right. years of having it. Right. You know. Right. It, and yeah. having uh, Janie's training. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Justine. Yeah, I wanted to ask if um, what the parent involvement is like, the parent reception. Um, is there any connection between, you know, home and school with regard to your program? Good question. Yeah. So, um, Parents are always appreciative. They're, you know, they're, they're, um, they can recognize their kiddos reading better oftentimes. Um, sometimes, though, there have definitely, definitely have, have students who might need reading support, and that being kind of surprising to parents because, as far as they're concerned, their kid reads great. And, and I can show you even what's on the lowest end group, and if you look at that book, you might think, that's actually reading still pretty good. Mm -hmm. But when they test out, it might show them not anywhere near where they should be. But if you look at a book that they're able to read, that looks pretty well. So that's mm -hmm. one of those things. So sometimes parents may not see the same thing that we're seeing in terms of how their kiddo might need more support. Um, but for okay. the most part, I get lots of great feedback all the time. Okay. Is, Thank you. Sure. Is there any, um, is it worth putting home sending home recommendations these would be good books for this kid no, no well lindy and i actually had this conversation just the other day about okay. how since the pandemic how different it is in terms of kids independent reading so we can get them to read a lot here mm -hmm. but they're taking home diary of a wimpy kid or dog man mm -hmm. or some other Type book, not not the meat well, books I'm yeah. <laughs> reading, Comedian which is part of my book tasting that's happening over there, because that's why all well, break. I'm thinking, okay, how am I going to get better books into their hands? How can I have them read this independently and want to read mm -hmm. some of these better texts instead of just going to kind of what's humorous and easy? Um, but I have seen a huge difference since the pandemic in terms of kids choosing. I'm just going to grab that quick graphic mm -hmm. novel to read, mm -hmm. you know. She's working me, making Which me work course, really hard. Forget, <laughs> Courtney, Courtney has the name. Yeah. Courtney, my wife, who's a librarian, has the name of the woman. She studied this in library school. And her theory is they're reading. Right, right, exactly. And that, you know, and that, and that I understand. Believe me, when, when yeah. they all start, those kind of books started coming home and the graphic novel, Wilder right. Loves, the graphic novel. Yeah, they are. Um, but, yeah. yeah. And, that, and that's why with, and Lindy and I just talked about this the other day, I'm like, okay, so I'm not going to say you must read this when you go home, and you mm -hmm. must, do, you know what I mean, because I'm already pushing them hard in here, and I don't mm -hmm. feel like I want to be heavy-handed when yep. they go home, especially during a pandemic and what I'm asking of them all the time, but 
if I can inspire them <laughs> to want to read these yeah. books and kind of, so this book tasting, is that's a part of what this is about. Good. Like, okay, you're going to get just a little taste of all these different books. I'm hoping, I'll let you know if it's successful enough, it. but I'm hoping great. that that'll get them interested in reading some other great stuff and make them branch out. Excellent. Thank you. Any further questions or comments? <laughs> she does. But favorite teacher I've ever had. <laughs> well, Good answer. So I do feel bad we didn't even like introduce. So if you're watching this after the fact, this is Miss Donna, as the kids know her, or Miss Donna Gallant, who wears multiple hats at Stockbridge, which mm -hmm. includes liter literacy teacher for 456, our literacy interventionist for K through 6, and our school librarian. And she does an amazing job. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and if you haven't ever been in this Stockbridge Library, it is an inspiring place. Every time I come here, it's an inspiring place. Just the visuals of it are always make me want to hang out yeah. and pull books off the shelf. So Absolutely. just come and take a look, just so you know what a good library looks like. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Miss. See you tomorrow. Okay. Oh. All right. Very good. How are we doing for time, Amy? Uh, we were over by 15 minutes on that presentation, um, but I did not want to stop us because that is the okay. best part of what we're here for. So um, we did um, go a little short on some other reports, so I will try to keep us on track as we're going forward. Good. Thank you. That's I, I agree with you. I personally agree with your sentiment. 9-1, draft number four, the 22-23 RSUD budget with revenue and tax sheet. Now... I want to try this a little differently than let's go and start pulling out the numbers and what does this mean and stuff like that. I want to go to the broader. Um, Jamie always makes the point that a budget is a policy statement. Mm -hmm. And I guess I want to say, um, I think from, and this is what I want your feedback on before we actually look at the numbers. I get the feeling as from our conversations, I missed the last meeting, but from our various conversations, that if I put our policy with our budget and for the next year, it would sound something like creative and rigorous education working with what we have. In other words, that we, we don't want to add a whole bunch of things we talked about. We don't want you know, specials. We, we, we want to integrate things. I know we had a big conversation about that a couple meetings ago. Um, but the, the, the creative thing, and I know you talked about this last meeting when I wasn't here, one of our, our vision ideas was this idea of creative education, that we want to encourage teachers to be creative. And so, it, you know, if somebody disagrees with my definition of our, our version of a vision of the budget, you know, that's something we should talk about now. But if that is our vision, how does this budget uh -huh. support that? And that we literally start from the vision and see how the budget supports that rather than number, you know, and obviously we need to understand everything in the budget, but that, but that it, it's defined sort of like MTSS, you know, everything you do has to fit into the MTSS. And in this sense, everything we do in this budget has to be supported by our vision of working with what we have, but being creative and rigorous. Any comment on that? What I'm saying, or is there agreement? Is there disagreement? No, I think you're you're spot on. Okay. Good. Yeah, I'll I think that makes a great connection between what we were kind of going toward um, and, and how we can implement it and and it, have it be, um, you know, go with the, the structure that's already there. So mm -hmm. it's a good connection. It's so, it's I all. I was thinking on the way down here as I was driving. It's kind of boring to just say, well, we want to level fund, you know, that that's not very interesting. And that doesn't really convey all the excitement that's happening. The fact is, we want this creative and we want rigorous and we want to do it with what we have. And I think people can get behind that. It's a good way to sell a budget. Mm -hmm. And I trust that that's what you all are, are yeah. doing. Good. That said, um, I open the floor to... Um, do you want to present who's presenting this well you know we went through expenditures yeah. last time yep. they haven't really changed 
since the last budget, mm -hmm. uh, or the last presentation, last budget, <laughs> last meeting, um, I think the big piece, Tara, do you want to speak to revenue and really the the bottom line around the tax sheet? I mean, this budget supports what we currently have. Mm -hmm. Supports out full time outdoor education and pathways. It supports music. It supports world language. Um, so it does support what we have and keeps us going in the right direction. I really believe that. So, Tara, take us. Okay. Whoop. Sorry, I just... Tara, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble hearing you suddenly. Don't know why. Is that better? Yes, yes, that is. Thank you. All right, turn my volume up. So overall, I made the adjustments to the SU and special education assessments once we had the approved budget. So right now, we're looking at an increase of $101,633, which yep. results in a 2.35% increase. 2.35. How does it compare? How does that com How does that compare to last year, Tara? I just don't. Do you have them? It's a 2.35 percent increase over last year. 101 dollars. No, I mean, what was it as far as the increase last year? Oh, okay. Keep going. I can get that. Okay, uh, she's uh, Lindy's working on it. So keep going. Sorry, I interrupted you. Tuition, I use the 22 students at the FY22 rate. Obviously, once you set your tuition rate tonight, if you change your tuition rate, that will change. The tuition for the pre-K, the FY23 tuition rate is $3,656. So I've adjusted that based on six incoming students. I haven't made any changes to the rental. I didn't make any changes to the trustee of public funds. This gets to your forestry grant. The way the agency recommends us to budget for that is current year less 10%. So that's what I've done there. Miscellaneous revenues remain the same. We do not get a <coughs> bank refund and donations. You don't typically budget for it because it's not a guarantee. So your local revenue is that $420,202. Calculates out what your education spending is going to be, which is your expenditure and your local revenue. Tech center tuition on behalf. This number is the number that matches the expenditure. This is a wash. This is what the agency of education pays directly to the tech centers on your behalf. The Act 60 related transportation. This is a reimbursement that you get in the fiscal year for the prior fiscal year's home to school transportation contract with Butler. And we're seeing around a 40% reimbursement. So that number is calculated based on your FY22 contract at a 40% reimbursement rate. Small schools grant, you're still, as far as I'm aware, we're getting that. There hasn't been any change there. So the total revenue from state and federal sources is $3,715,598. The next section down is the grants that you get from the supervisory union. We made a reduction to your school-wide CFP, that's the Consolidated Federal Program, previously Title I, and that is based on what you are receiving in the fiscal year 22. And then also we provide uh, Medicaid reimbursement for the salary and benefits for your school nurse. 
So total grants is $144,585. So then if we move to the tax sheet. Uh, we, well, let's, let's go do the whole. Let her go gotcha. all the way through. Gotcha. Because I'm very good at interrupting beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Tara, please. Sorry. Right. So the tax sheet works top chart. Your budgeted expenditures. We don't have any changes that we're putting in there currently. Less your offsetting revenue. Gives you an education spending, which is what you collect in property taxes and from the Ed Fund. $3,399,550. Your equalized pupil based on the current number given to us by the Agency of Education. Caveat, it is not the final. Increase from 172.19 to 175.14. So you take your Act 68 education spending, you divide that by your equalized pupil, and that gives you your education spending per pupil cost of $19,410.47, which is below the threshold for FY23, which is $19,977. So then we go down to your equalized residential tax rate, which is calculated based on your per pupil spending divided by the yield. So we were given two scenarios for the yield this year. We chose to go with the more conservative yield of the $12,937, and that's an increase from $11,317 in the current fiscal year. So that gives you an equalized tax rate of 1.5004. The merger incentive is gone, so that's been zeroed out. And the non-residential tax rate that's set by the tax department, using the more conservative numbers, is the 1.4820. And that's a reduction from the 1.6120. So then we move to the individual towns. So the first box is Rochester. Your CLA in FY22 was that 102.98. Your CLA for 23 is 95.63. So you had a substantial drop in your CLA. So that gives you a tax rate of 1.5689, which is a reduction of 0 0.0196 over your FY22 tax rate. On the Stockbridge tax rate, the CLA for 22 was at 101.36%. CLA for 23 is 90.10, so it gives you a homestead tax rate of 1.6652, which is an increase of 0.0512 over the FY22 tax rate. Hmm, well, that could be tricky. Tara, can you just explain like the drop in the CLA. I know it's not your control, but it's based on. I, yes, CLA is based on your property values and the sales that happened in your communities. I, th I thought things were going for crazy amounts. But it's, it, so things are going for crazy amounts, but they're going well above the assessed value, right? Which is what causes the drop in the common yeah. level of appraisal. Hmm. So we That's need like to wait opposite. for we need to wait for a, a real town-wise appraisal. And aren't we? Does anybody know? I think we're getting close to one of those coming up. Anybody? Anyway. Well, the irony is that talking about CLAs, the stock rate just went through a reappraisal. Oh yeah. In 2021, yeah. or 
uh, effective 2021. Maybe not. Um, so, and last year we were like 105 percent CLA uh, down to 101, and now we're down to 90 percent. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about less than two years when we just did a total townwide reappraisal, mm -hmm. and so it's very very frustrating. Uh, assuming the state numbers are good, it shows that uh, property values are skyrocketing around here. People want to move to Vermont. And mm -hmm. um, what better place is there in Stockbridge and, and Rochester? Um, so that's the difficulty. And even if you come in with a reasonable budget that achieves your educational goals, performance goals that you were talking about, yeah. um, the common level of appraisal can make what the taxpayer pays um, look um, uh, not happy about. Yeah. Now, what we've talked about before is the good news in Vermont, and we're one of the only states in the country that has a income sensitivity um, tax law that allows taxpayers to pay, depending on their income, based on their income of it's up to 90 or 95,000, or based on the value of the property tax. Uh, excuse me, the, the value of the property. In Vermont, and I say there's no reason to believe that Rochester and Stockbridge are any different, about two-thirds of the property owners, taxpayers in Vermont, pay by their income. Mm -hmm. Because in our communities, our, our median income is 60,000. So income sensitivity goes all the way up to 90,000. And when you look at those two-thirds of those taxpayers, what they're paying in Rochester and Stockbridge, um, they're not being hit by this. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, and Tara's going to review my numbers, and Jamie hasn't had the chance yet, but for our two communities, uh, if you're paying by your income, your tax flow for schools has actually gone down for the last six years. Which is a point we clearly need to make clear um, to the voters. Now... The downside is those that are more affluent um, with this common level of appraisal are going to be hit by this increase, even though our school budget is w well within um, the state limits. Now, then we go back to Jamie's letter to us, and he's saying that, and I've been tr following it too, the special commission on Wayne um, equalized students in rural areas needs to be fixed and we talked about we started with that saying if the legislature acts on either model one or model two we're going to see in our two communities a reduction in the neighborhood of of of, of 12 to 14 percent and that if it happens will not only help our two-thirds paying by their income but it will also help those people that are paying by their property tax and so um, I looked at this and I'm going, my gosh, this is frustrating when the mm -hmm. school administration is doing everything possible and we still have a projected three, over 3% 3 increase. Um, well, and but that doesn't necessarily mean that's going to happen uh, for the reasons I just stated. I just well, think our selling points are different than years past. We're yes. well under the excess yep. spending yeah. threshold for the first time since I've been here. Normally, I mean, I can't even tell you how many times Tara probably can. We've scrounged to be under. Mm -hmm. Our, you know, our student, our equalized pupil count is up, which is great. I also think the other thing is we've got to compare like that equalized tax rate. It was $1.6359 last year. It's yeah. $1.50 yes. this year. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, that comment level of appraisal changes some things, but I just think we're doing a lot to still be fiscally responsible. And yeah, you're that's why cool. the board letter Amy. and Sorry. the principal's letter that we send out with our budget mailer and why our budget presentation has to focus on those high points. And again, explain like we did last year what the yield of the CLA does to the tax rate. I mean, this is the same the same challenge that we had last year. Yeah. Um, Amy, go ahead. I just wanted to piggyback on um, um, what Bill was saying and Lindy was just saying and point out that we have reduced the tax rate by 13 cents 
it's mm -hmm. unfortunately because of the continued calculations with the CLAs and both of our towns, Stockbridge, more affected, but the, the, we have sold so much properties for such a higher value than what the properties are valued at just because that's the climate of today. I don't, I believe everywhere in Vermont probably is dealing with this exact same thing that the, the properties got bought at a high rate really fast. Um, and unfortunately that affects our budget, but to come in at 13 cents mm -hmm. less than we did last year is huge. Mm -hmm. yes. 13 cents is huge. We're not talking about one cent. We're not talking a half of 13 cents. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think that with uh, Bill's additional um, income sensitivity information and um, like Tara was just saying uh, about the presentation that goes along with these numbers um, and with the high points that we have all these wonderful things that we have achieved. Um, and I do really want us to stress these because there is not a lot of public at these meetings that we are really hearing all the wonderful things that our school mm -hmm. is doing right now. And we really need to get out this out there to the public with this budget of, of these wonderful programs that we are doing um, and these successes. So well, that, that will be our challenge. Here's my, sure. here's my question to the um, Stockbridge board, because I mean, this just, it's the red flag for me. <laughs> especially when you have a different, you know, they see it go down in Rochester and go up here. And then it, you know, of course, Rochester votes and we pass it. I mean, you know, this is, this is the argument that we've had before. Do you think this is, do the Stockbridge representatives feel like this is such a red flag? I mean, obviously, well, go ahead. I, I, I just want to hear from you what, what you have to say about it. I think it's a package. So I, like, like Amy was saying, I feel like um, there's a lot more to it than just looking at these numbers. However, the public, you know, will just often just see the, yep. the numbers and, and the change and, and react in that manner. But I, I, I do think it's important to realize what, what else is uh, at play than just the, the math. Do you think we can do that? <laughs> I mean, you know, you're our representatives from this community. Um, um, I, I think we might have to make an, a, an effort to uh, encourage participation. I'm not sure why, you know, why there's been kind of no participation at all since the, since the vote. But um, it, could we have a special meeting or an informational? Well, think, we, we will have an informational meeting. Yeah, I also think... I mean, that, ahead of time, maybe, even yeah. before, to kind of uh, start some... Uh, participation from the community again. Uh-huh. What were you going to say? Honey? I was going to say, I think we need to utilize uh, the Herald like we did for the revote and really get some information out via the letter to the editors. That seemed to get mm -hmm. a lot of active participation. People were reading and taking information in. Yeah, I... I don't know what you think, though, but that's the way I felt. Yeah, that's yeah, a very good question. I don't think any of the Stockbridge... And we're representatives of both communities. I, mean, no, I, I live in Stockbridge, but, no, but, but this but, is combined, but we, we cannot say. I do think that the lesson we learned in the revote was that once people are alerted and then they can, Informed. they're interested enough, and I think the Herald was huge mm -hmm. in disseminating facts as well as opinions, then they're willing to make the right decision. And I think they did it last time because it, um, so I think we have the work cut out for us. And you look at the Stockbridge numbers here and, but I, I don't, we can't be effective if we are basing our public policy on fear. Yeah. We are doing it based on hope yeah. and accomplishment and the performance and belief that we've got a, institutions that are delivering and are going to be doing it even more in the future and they need the tools to get there and it's our job as community leaders to uh, to get that message across and I have some cautious optimism that we can do that Patrick um, I guess my only question would be I mean if, if the merge hadn't happened would that I mean, isn't it potential that that number could even be greater? Absolutely. Well, that was the whole point, yeah, the previous. So, yeah, it's gone up, but, I mean, it could be even worse. Well, it... <laughs> so, it um, I, I don't think it's... 
as simple as looking at, you know, town to town, you know, what, who's going up, who's going down. And like, like Justine said, it's, I think it's more of a combination and looking at everything as a whole. Well, I, I, I just looking at this, the F, FY23 equalized tax rate, it's a great visual that that's right above the CLA and it's identical for both mm -hmm. towns. Mm -hmm. And that it's boom, the CLA, that's what's doing what it. I think, I think we, we really heighten that graphic and it makes our point pretty clear that, you know, we're doing our job. This isn't about us. This is about the towns and yeah. this is what we're given. Yeah. Amy? Well put. I think we, we really heighten that graphic and it makes our point pretty clear that, you know, we're doing our job. This isn't about us. This is about the town. Yeah. Yeah. Amy? Well put. Yeah, I, I totally agree with what you just said. And, and when Patrick was kind of just talking about like different scenarios, um, I, the, the, the thought hasn't completely formed, but I'm wondering if, you know, looking at last year's um, equalized tax rate, and if you then calculated it by the current CLA, what would where would you be you know just kind of pointing out that we're you know we th th these numbers unfortunately it's the cla that has done the harm and and not the budget, the budget i did that budget. in the reports last year Amy. yeah so uh, it's something to that effect of like that um just to just to show kind of other scenarios like last year which is hard numbers we know for sure this is what it was but if if that was in today's climate, right. it would actually be this, which is- Yeah, I, I, last year I did a breakdown of what each factor impacted the tax rate. So what, especially for you guys, when your equalized pupil went down, how much that impacted your tax rate, and then the yield impacted the tax rate, and then the COA. So I had provided a little chart on that last year, and I'll do that again this year for you. Well, from everything that Lindy has said, um, I think this budget supports um, our school and what we want uh, going forward for our school. And um, I think at this point, there these are wonderful numbers. You're gonna have to get Stockbridge down to a, a less of an increase. We're, we would have to make dramatic cuts. And we've already cut 13 cents off the tax rate. Um, we've reduced 13 cents off the tax rate. The CLA is bringing the tax rate up for Stockbridge. Well, I just think we've controlled what we can control. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? We've put together a budget that supports our well, programming. And what it's resulted in is a 13 cent decrease in your tax rate. Yeah. The pieces um, we can't control is the CL. That's way beyond any of our control, unless you're purchasing. <laughs> I always say that the simpler your message, the simpler your message. That's why I'm trying to get it down to, you know, this is what we did. Two sentences, basically, you know, that we can, mm -hmm. it's pithy. Um, Patrick, go ahead. What were you going to say? Uh, okay, I was just copying. Oh, <laughs> no, but it's just, it's just, you know, we. This is Robert. Oh, yeah, go, Robert. This is Robert. Uh, I also, uh, it, you shouldn't lose fact is lose sight of the fact that people are willing to pay you more if they think their money is well spent. Yeah. Even if you tax them less, if they think their money is not being well spent, they will complain about it. But you can see we have had situations where it's gone up and the people think the money is well spent, they will pay it happily. And we have a lot to be proud of. We know that we are not where we want to be in our long-term goals, but we are making such good progress, and that really has to be coupled, you know, with with the uh, uh, with the message. Have to highlight that this is how we're spending your money. Well, I I think I mean I think our strategy should start literally in the Herald next week. I mean I think the the sooner we get ahead of this, before the the word gets out and and with you know, put, putting our story out there, the better. Um, we've done really, really well. The schools are running well. Um, the CLA 
is bringing the tax rate up in Stockbridge. And I think that's a message that if we can get a letter out next week even, hey, we just found this out in our budget, and we want to know, inform you as soon as possible that this is what we're looking at. Amy. Uh, yes, you just have to be, because we have not approved this mm -hmm. budget yet, uh, you just have to be gotcha. careful with the wording that you are using. Thank you, thank you. Put that out there. I appreciate uh, that very much. I get carried away. and uh, um, But anyway, that... The, my point is, you know, after we approve this budget, um, if we do if we do approve it next next uh, meeting, then we want to get ahead of this message. Yeah, I like that. I, I, I like what you're talking about being proactive, and we need to be proactive rather than trying to respond to. Misinformation. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. We have an opportunity in this next month because we haven't approved the budget to develop a strategy of how we're going to uh, inform, communicate with the public, uh, whether it's public sessions or the Herald or mm -hmm. or uh, school brochures and everything else like that, and take homes. And we combine those two of having a sound budget and we have a strategy so that we're ready. Mm -hmm. to act uh, and communicate uh, um, immediately after that. I think that's really sound. Uh, you know, I think you're right on to something. And we've got some time to develop that. Uh, there's, uh, there's a number of pieces here. Uh, the other thing is, is I'd love to get a better sense of, and it, we're going to have, a, the, the, what is it, the Speaker of the House or the, President of the Senate is going to be on this webinar on Monday about what they're saying about the waiting Timeline. system, mm -hmm. whether that's a pie in the sky or not. And that could be part of what we need to communicate to the public if there's some really, really good news there mm -hmm. coming down uh, the bin. The other thing is that, sorry to keep talking, income sensitivity, I've spent more time trying to get numbers from the state on that, and it's very hard to fathom, and, and Tara's helping me too, and it's it's tricky, and I'd love to be able to get a better sense of what it looks like for the two-thirds of the households in our communities that are paying by income sensitivity, and uh, I'm not sure where the state numbers are at this point, because um, it's ultimately established by the legislature, so, uh, uh, so that month, if we do our homework might help us there as well. This is Robert. Yep. Go ahead, Robert. Uh, the, uh, if you want more participation than the public, you should, I, I would put out the, start putting out to the um, uh, newspaper as soon as we can, a lot of our improvements, but uh, also point out that the budget will be, um, will be targeting to approve the budget, you know, next month. So we encourage participation. So you'll, people won't care if you, if people already approved the budget and um, they haven't had a chance to talk about it. But if you, yeah, that's if you good say point. that there are, if, if, even if you have some special meetings, just to listen. I mean, between now and the and the next regular meeting. Well, obviously, the, the easiest way would be to get a good turnout at the next meeting. You know, to say we're approving this budget. There's great things to celebrate. There's some things we're concerned about. Come and join the meeting, and put the word out. We might get some real talkers. You know, some real uh, people who influence. To show up and 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 hear us, and that would be very useful. That's the easiest way. And then obviously the Herald is also that. Good. Any other comments on the budget at this time? Do we feel? Uh, I, I guess the real question actually is: Do we feel like we're ready to move it and act on it next month if we're in that place? I had a. Well, let me just Sorry. let me just go through here first. Yeah, um, go ahead. Justine is a yes. Amy is a yes. Robert, how do you feel? Uh, I 
think so, yes. But we need to be prepared to, if, if we hear some public comment that might influence us to change, we need to be prepared to do that. Uh -huh. um, and and require an expertise. Sorry, what was the last part, Robert? It might require an ex extra special meeting. Got you. Patrick, do you feel good about yeah. the budget? That's a yes to that question. Okay. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. So I think we've achieved our work for tonight. Bill, Bill, Bill you had one last comment? Yeah, the question and the comment, uh, or two questions. One is, uh, Linda, you said that en enrollment's up. Is our budget for FY23 reflecting an increase in enrollment uh, from this year, or was right. it la our last year's, or our current budget? Is it, is it, tuition, uh, is, Enrollment projected to actually increase from the current enrollment going forward in Rochester, Stockbridge. So it's it's budgeted to. I'm going to break that down into two different ways. In terms of expenses, like supplies, all those things, yes, that budget supports a continued increase in population. I will say on tuition, like that we receive yes. on the revenue side, and Tara, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe we budgeted a little bit on the conservative side yes. just because there's people that move in and out. Yep. So we don't want to be counting on heads that are, you know, that we receive tuition from floor yep. when we might be short one or two. But you're, you're hopeful and you think the indicators are, are for continued growth. Okay, I think that's huge. Mm -hmm. um, Secondly, I'm, uh, I'm with the Stockbridge Trustees of Public Funds, and each year since I've been associated with going back, the trustees each year have contributed monies um, for the ongoing support of the school and uh, the children that are educated in the school. And I'm asking the question of the Rochester, and uh, I've noticed in the, the Revenue budget I've seen here that there's no kind, no participation there. Does anybody can anybody help me on? Is are the Rochester trustees not being asked, or are they being asked and they have other uses for their funding? What's what's the scoop there? I think Amy. Go ahead, Amy. Right. Yep, I can I can try to answer this. Um, I have a, a a long speech and a short speech, so we'll start <laughs> short. And if you want more information, I'll expand upon that. Thank you. Okay, so the Stockbridge School Endowments are managed by the Stockbridge Trustees of Public Funds. The Rochester School Endowments are not managed by the Rochester Trustees of Public Funds. The Rochester Trustees of Public Funds manages and distributes town endowments. So. In the past, they have been asked. Um, there were a number of years that the Rochester, Rochester Trustees of Public Funds did not give any funds out, none to the school and none to the town. Um, I do not, we, we had asked, uh, I have at least one or two letters, unfortunately I was not able to put my hand on them sure. today, um, that we had asked the Trustee, Rochester Trustees of Public Funds for some funds, but uh, we were denied. Uh, again, at the time, they didn't feel like they were in a financial position to to fund anybody or only be able to fund uh, the town a small amount. I know the last, they've declined in their, their ability to fund. Um, Rochester nice. School does have endowments uh, and those balances are always printed in our annual report. Uh, but as long as I've been aware of, they've never been actually put into the revenue budget. Um, but maybe a discussion with administration on the approximate dollars to be used, um, to, that they may want to use this year from these funds might be an appropriate way to put that into the conversation to be aware of. We just have to be careful that the funds are used for what they were set up for. Yeah. So we would need to, right? We would need to be reading the trust documents, right? To make sure well, we're in alignment, right? And and they are each one of them is a little bit different, and yeah. that is probably why they were never 
actually put in as a revenue line and because they were some were a little more specific to their uses and um, so it was just at the discretion of the, the administration uh, but I do hear Bill's um, question and I do know that this is a common question uh, from Stockbridge residents which is totally understandable so if there's a way that we could you know present that ooh, there is funds from the Rochester endowments that are going to be used in the appropriate fashion maybe that would satisfy i think we present it two ways right i think we present like while this nine thousand dollars has been used year after year to help with the revenue to offset i've only ever spent it here for stockbridge school per the trustees of public funds i think if i explain and i have a record of what i've spent those funds on for here at stockbridge and then we explain those funds for rochester and what they can be and come up with a plan of how to use some of them and just explain why it can't be put in the revenue maybe that'll help get ahead of the question of why is it one versus the other and I agree. again that whole proactive concept yes yeah i like that i i had trouble i couldn't hold a sec robert sorry robert wanted to speak robert do you have something to say Yes, I understand that this has been a very good year for the the, uh, the trustees of public funds as far as their revenues. So I would, if, if you, this is a good year, ask them for, for funds. Yeah, it's an incredible stock market. Right. So I mean, it, it's. I believe that there there is. Uh, I mean, I'm on the budget finance committee, but I believe that we're going to end up with a substantial cut contribution but that's not set in stone uh, contribution to the town town side so so we should ask we definitely ask and that would be up to yeah. you Lindy. i'll connect with amy on that amy since yep. you helped fund with it in previous years right. thanks um okay. just to clarify then oh this gets confusing um do we know the school funds, how they distribute money? And maybe you already talked to this, but I didn't get it yet. We know how that happens. Yes, uh, I have a handle on the funds, how to, and how to actually get a check. <laughs> Great. Um, the question is, um, the, you know, with the, with the administration, uh, one fund is specifically the administration decides what it's theirs to, to decide how much they want to spend. Uh, that's just, it's that discussion of, of how much we want to spend. But there is definitely a mechanism for getting the money. So your choice, sort of, mm -hmm. how to spend it. Or, yeah, yeah, it's actually it's very much your choice. Which is the way it works with yeah. uh, the stuff which trustee funds as well. Bill, got it. Bill, Bill, I'm, anything Bill, else? I'm pleased and... Uh, Okay. No, it's a team effort. Yeah. Great point. Good. Um, I think we're moving on to 9-3. 2021 audit possible action. Did you, did you want to do the mailer or you just want to Oh, sorry. No, I just jumped right over it. Um, we should talk about the uh, our sudden annual mailer. Um, I do know, I remember from last year that Jenny Austin had said pretty clearly that she would be interested in putting that together for us again um, and I uh, before the meeting I asked Lindy if she'd be willing to reach out to Jenny to ask about that be great um, I know one of the things we came up with was we had a we have an outline mm -hmm. for the bulletin and uh, uh, that's very useful as far as where information goes so we don't have to totally reinvent the wheel yeah. um, but uh, there are a few things um, that Images, if we want images, how we do that, what kind of images. Does this administration want to take that on, or is that something you need help with? I think I'll connect with Jenny and see what, go from there. So maybe could you come back next meeting with mm -hmm. a, a list of tasks and yeah. we can distribute them out? Yeah. Does that sound reasonable, board? Amy, go ahead. Can we get... Tara, uh, can we get the um, cost of last year's um, 
actual uh, booklet, the printing, uh, because I know we were try we tried really hard with color putting color pages in in the mm -hmm. budget in certain places so that it would be cheaper to run just certain pages in color. Um, so I would be interested to know um, what was the price for what what we got last year so we can make decisions on how we want to go forward. Um, Printing and binding, if you look at your budget, was thirty was three thousand two hundred and ninety six dollars. Um, Three thousand two hundred ninety-six. That was. That's not the mailing of it. That's just that the, FY twenty-one actuals that we spent for printing and binding. Tara, have any other uh, districts gone to just virtual and uh, printed on request? Everyone's printing. You're required by statute to send out certain pieces of information. Yes, but not all of it, right? Not what you send, no. You yeah. can do a much shorter version based on what you're required to send out by a statute. I mean, that was there was, I remember in meetings last year and years before, we've talked about, you know, is it time? And maybe this isn't the year we're doing. We've got such a nice budget and we're doing really well. Maybe this isn't the year to, you know, skimp on this. I like the booklet. Um, I, how does everyone else feel about that? You had a lot of positive feedback from your community members on your book. Mm -hmm. Explanations. And based on, you know, I do the books for the majority of our districts. So, you know, based on my own personal experience, I find your book to be much more informative than in some of the other districts, mm -hmm. which is what I think helps in your situation. Great. Great. That's all That's I need to hear. <laughs> That's all I need to hear. Anybody else want to save thirty-seven hundred dollars? Or Amy, go ahead. Well, I, you know, I'm on the fence about this. I uh, am uh, conscious of our, you know, cutting the trees down footprint. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, as you brought up before, we are helping to support a local business mm -hmm. as well. Um, so it would be, a, I think we need to go forward with our wonderful big book this year. Mm -hmm. I, it would be nice to continue to brainstorm about other ideas of, um, you know, being able to maybe send out two different versions, a condensed and a more elaborate version or, or offering it online. I, I think it's definitely worth more of a conversation. Um, Tara, can you tell me how many books were printed for that price? Not off the top of my head, I have to go pull the invoice. Well, if you wouldn't mind, just for the continuing well, I'll mail it to you. Yes. When they, well, you. we'll make this an agenda item for next time again, and we'll come back for the report, yay or nay, to Jenny. Um, then we might, no, I guess February's okay to start. We're earlier than we've ever been. Yeah, yeah, no, I remember. I, I think the one I did two years ago, I think I did it in a month or something. It was crazy. It was insane. I'm never going to do that again. It was a lot, <laughs> it was of, a running. lot of work. Yes. Um, uh, 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 good. Um, okay. I, I, the other thing just came to me, that image of, this is the one time, aside from the mailers, we're doing a lot a better job with newsletters going home, stuff like that. Things are on people's tables more. So it, it takes a little bit of the pressure off. This used to be the one thing that we went home with. But I think, yeah, I think as long as we go with our continuing information um, and anybody think about if you have a chance take a look at the old bulletins and just brainstorm and think you know I wish there was this in here because we put a lot of information but it'd be great to hear or ask other people you know is there any other information we should have in there that we don't have because it, it really can be an educational tool um, for people to understand the system maybe we need a discussion of CLA you know, so a real definition of what CLA is, because I don't get it. I still don't get it, even after we talked about it tonight. And I think a little blurb that would say, boom, this is CLA. This is yield. You know, maybe we did talk yield. I don't I remember. I think it's in there, but yeah, we but, should look. Yeah, just to make sure, because those are obviously two big terms that hit people. Those every... are also in my report, Ethan. Yep. They're in your report. We we may want to... We yeah, may all... We may also want to pull them out and make them footnotes under the tax page, you know, sort of mean so they're not in the in a dense text. They're bulleted with high colors and all that kind of stuff or whatever. Just just because I think that particularly this year, that's going to be the information people are going to want.
Good. Anything else on this? We, we thought it was a minute. <laughs> five. You said yeah. five. You said five. Yeah. It was like 20, wasn't it, Amy? Oh, we're okay. good. Okay, good. Uh, we're all good to move on. Uh, mission vision. I didn't actually look audit. at it. Audit. Oh, audit. audit. Look, geez. I'm trying to get home, I guess. Um, 2021 audit, possible action. So I sent to you a quick little snapshot of the high points in the audit mm -hmm. and then provided you with your wonderful long pages of the audit. I gave you the PowerPoint that kind of helps explain some of the key terms. Um, but to just go over it again, your unassigned fund balance was $284,554. Sorry, Tara, Tara, I yeah. need to just ask some definitions because I just don't remember what things mean. What is unassigned? Yeah, I'm just do that. What's yeah, unassigned? Unassigned mean? fund balance is what we can use. That is your surplus at the end of the fiscal year. Gotcha. So we can use it to offset revenue in FY23 or to request the voters to set it aside in a reserve fund. When so do we have to? As you remember, in the revenue, I put in one hundred and fifty thousand, yep. and recommended the remainder. The remainder goes into you put it on a it's a special article on your warning, and the town votes that to put that money in the reserve fund. Those do are the do two we you have? Do we make the decision? Does the board make the decision which river reserve fund to ask them to put it into, or is it just a yep. general reserve fund? No, you've got a couple different ones, so you can break it down. Can we can we have that as an agenda item next time, so that when we just approve the budget? Yeah, we would go over that when we're writing your warning. Yep. Okay, but let's let's talk about that because I think we want to spend some time looking at those different funds. And, and make... you can also create new ones if you wanted to. Yeah, good. I think let's. let's but you would have to put that on the ballot, as good. you remember from prior good. discussions. If you want to create a reserve yep. fund, the town has to vote on it. So, for an example, yep. if you wanted to create a tuition reserve fund, which is what I recommend in all of my districts that have sending students, you would put that article on the warning. Ooh. The voters would say yes or no, and then if they say yes, you would then vote to say we're going to take twenty thousand dollars from the prior year surplus and. Fund the, begin to fund the tuition reserve fund. This is the first time you may have mentioned this before. First time I remember. What a great idea. Amy, what do you, go ahead. Yep. So I think that this should definitely be um, an item to, of discussion on our next agenda to get familiar with the reserve funds that we already have established yep. but are not necessarily funded at this point, which uh, we do have a tuition reserve fund. It's just not. Fund, there's no actual money in it. So I think um, if we could have put it on the agenda for, for a good discussion you next. Got good, 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 good. Um, mm -hmm. Lindy's got it. Very appropriate. I think that's great. Great. Thank you. Sorry. And I may do this again just because I, I was a little confused reading this on my own. Great. So uh, please continue, Tara. So the other fund balances non surplus fund those are things you can't spend. So our non-spendable is $3,808, and that represents our prepaid retirement. So that's money we've already collected that we have to pay into the retirement system. The oh, committed that's really retirement. of $173,600 is the portion that we have already set aside in FY22 to offset your revenue. So that's what that page 16 or 15 in your report represents down at that bottom section. Whoa, okay. I'm sorry. I lost, uh, you lost me there. Um, what are you looking at, Ethan? This committed, at the, 100, looking at the 173,000. Just that's what we put okay. towards. So that 173,6 is what is in your FY22 budget as offsetting revenue. Mm -hmm. So that becomes a committed fund balance at the end of FY21. Right? Okay. You've already utilized that money. You can't use it again. Yeah, no, no, it's great. It's just the jumping years sometimes confuses me. Yeah. Yep. Got and, you. And that 173 is already removed from the 284. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes, if you look at that total fund balance on page 15, it's 461,000. Yep, <laughs> I've got tutors on either side of it. You subtract these other funds from it, and then 
and that gets us to that 284 554 that we can use which is we'll why that's in the third line because it's almost like yeah and The purpose, just to make clear, Tara, the purpose of an audit is to make sure that the, the math adds up. Is that correct? Right, and that we follow the rules. Yeah, that you follow the rules of how you're supposed to list things. Okay. We spend money the right way. We did what we needed to do with the money. It's allocated where it needs to be allocated. And, and we did that, yes? We did. There were no findings. That's... That's the big one for me. Okay. Thank you. That was the word I was looking for in this report, and I didn't see it, so I was con confused. Keep going, please. Yes? We did. There were no findings. That's, that's the big one for me. Okay. Thank you. That was the word I was looking for in this report, and I didn't see it, so I was con confused. Keep going, please. So then page 17, if you wanted to look at a snapshot of your how FY21 ended gives you your statement of revenues, your expenditures, and the changes in fund balance. So that's a, an overview of how FY21 went. And how we got to that 461 on page 15. Good. Any other questions? Should we keep going? Good. And then the last page 74 through 75 are your budget to actual comparison. So it gives you the breakdown per function, the way the auditors write it up for your budget to actual. So that's just, again, another place that you can go to see what you actually did in FY21. And remember, and if you want to go over this in great detail, I'm happy to set up a time and we can go page by page, line by line. Does anyone need to go line by line of the audit? No, but I, I'm no, but I would take Tara up on her offer to to look at it a little bit more because this. What you've just done makes me understand it way more than I did before. So every little bit helps, and I want to be able to look at this and at least have written and not just be wasted paper. So, do you do you need an, uh, another month before we approve it? No, absolutely yeah. not. Okay. Does anybody do else? Have, do you have copies of it on that desk there? Did you, were they provided today? No, no. Okay. It was just online. That's the only place I saw it. Okay. If nope. you want a printed copy, Amy, I can print one for you and send it when we do the warrants next week. Okay, let me let me review it and see, you know. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Well, I'm, I'm good with it. I'm happy. I, uh, so then the last piece is to just go over with you the management recommendations. So these are not findings. These are recommendations that the auditors recommend to us on how we can tighten up our practices. So the majority of these are repeat um, from what we had last year, and it's something we continue to work on here. So the first one is our bank reconciliations. So what we do, your district treasurer controls the deposits for your bank accounts, as you know, we've talked about this several times. So they get the bank statements, they do the deposits. So at the close of each month, the treasurers send to us here the bank statements plus copies of all the deposits that they made in the prior month. Now, as you know, probably from your personal checking account, those statements don't come out until between the third and the 15th of the month, depending on what bank and how they're processing. So once we get all of that information, we then physically have to go in and do a reconciliation, just like you do in your personal checkbook. These checks cleared, these deposits cleared, these didn't. So we do that here internally and that becomes your bank reconciliation. So one of the findings was they wanted us to do that in a more timely manner. So we have already improved that and the majority of our bank recs 
are done within 30 days of the close of the month. So that was one of their recommendations. One of the other things that we worked on this year that we haven't done a lot with prior years because of staffing was tracking down uncleared checks. So we had some uncleared checks in our bank reconciliations that were more than 12 months old. So we've worked this year with the state of Vermont and the unclaimed property group to work to get those cleared up. We've reached out to the individuals, so that continues to be a work in progress for us. So that was one of their other recommendations. The other um, is their general ledger reconciliation, and those are our, our other accounts. So it's like our liability accounts when we withdraw money from an employee's paycheck to pay their portion of their benefits. We have not historically reconciled them every 30 days. We were doing it at the close of the fiscal year, then we moved to quarterly. So we'll continue to work as our staffing abilities are to get those reconciliations done on a more timely basis. And then the other one um, is a purchasing procedure. So we have a very detailed purchasing procedure for federal grants, but we don't have one for non-federal grants. So they recommended that we put a purchasing procedure in place for non-federal expenses. So we'll work to do that as well. And then lastly, with the universal chart of account change, and the way that the new GASB rules are, which is what we have to follow for accounting rules, we have to change the way the special revenue funds are set up in our software system. And each individual special revenue fund has to have a different fund number, and we historically used a different project or revenue number. So that is one of the chart of account conversions that we will continue to work with and we'll be bringing in an outside, we'll bring in our auditing firm to help us with that. So that's something throughout the entire supervisory union that we'll have to do. So those were our management letter recommendations that they reference in your audit. Excellent. Thank you so much, Tara. You're welcome. Uh, I'll entertain a motion if there being no more questions or even if there are questions, we can discuss it too, except and is this the corrupt, uh, except the results of the 2021 audit of yes, the I have to, to accept the FY21 audit. Yeah. I make a accept motion. The, yep. Amy? I make a motion, motion to accept the FY21 audit. Second. Second. Second is, uh, he got there first, you guys. <laughs> um, good. I'm next to the chair. Any further discussion? All in favor, let's do a roll call here. Amy? Aye. Christine? Aye. Robert? Aye. Patrick? Aye. May! Oh my God, I couldn't believe it. Unbelievable. So treat yourself, uh, pop a cork somewhere, please. Off camera if need be. But uh, <laughs> celebrate. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on. 9 4, my, uh, my fault. Um, you know, I was, I don't know if I'm the chairman of this committee, but uh, we sort of let it drop. I, I just heard that you had a very good from Bill. I heard a, he, he sent me a really good report. And uh, yeah, um, let's just say, let's put this back on for next time and we'll, we'll, We'll do something about it between now and then. Um, uh, uh, so my apologies if there's anything anybody wants to say now, but maybe we should just move on. Okay, good. Uh, hey, let's set some tuition rate, or no, let's talk about it first. Okay, so as you know, every year by the But maybe we should just move on. Okay, good. <laughs> Uh, hey, let's set some tuition rate, or no, let's talk about it first. Okay, so as you know, every year by statute, we, by January 15th, we have to set your FY23 announced tuition rate. So this is the rate that we are going to charge your receiving districts for students you're getting for tuition. So the formula that we use for this is based on 
not an approved budget, but the budget at the time that I do the, the calculation. So in this case, it's the expenditure budget. You back out your offsetting revenue. We back out the transportation. We back out special education. And that brings us down to the 2,881,868. We divide that by your equalized pupil and we come up with an allowable, I'm sorry, announced tuition rate of 16,454.65. Your current tuition rate is 16,950. And then I put your historical rates down below. So you can choose to go with the recommended. You could choose to go with what you already have, but historically what you all have done in the past is just increased at a percentage amount. And I, my recollection was it was 2% last year that you went up. Three, thank you, Amy. <laughs> uh, questions about this? Yes. What, uh, can you explain um, again the harm of um, setting your announced tuition too high? So we don't bill back in our supervised reunion. Right. So we don't bill back, which means we also don't credit back. So that is the allowable tuition that the Agency of Education sets for your, your, super, your district once I have submitted the prior year stat books. So historically, Rochester Stockbridge, since I've been here, I know way, way back when, many, many years ago, you all did bill back and it caused a lot of hate and discontent. Right. Um, but we have not done it since I've come on board and several business managers that I work with as mentors do not do it either. But if you were to bill back and your announced tuition rate is 3% higher or lower than the allowable, you either charge back or you refund so that there, 3%, over that 3%. So there's no, um, I don't know, state repercussions by, by, being three percent off or four percent off either way it's it's just within our own yeah okay yeah and to give you an example amy the fy 21 allowable tuition rate for our said was twenty thousand six ninety six. so you're well below your allowable tuition rate okay and that fluctuates every year based on your expenditures okay well this is yeah. go amy I trust um, your judgment. Yeah, I, I, you know, we, this is what we're, you know, charging uh, Hancock and, and, or, and anybody who wants to send any, any tuition town that wants to send. Um, and yes, we have historically just done an increase of 3%. Um, we were able to may have our budget be a little bit lower this, this year. Um, I would caution us to, to reduce it from that well i was just reading those numbers okay i'll go back 16, to my 950. the 60 i would I'd caution us from going reducing it that much from 16,950 down to 16,454. um i i i can see us reducing it a little bit or keeping it the same um would be my thoughts but i i'm really open to everybody else's thoughts other comments on this or questions if you still are curious about it are we ready to just vote on it well the one thing is i certainly don't want to have a tuition rate that has 65 cents we can't round that up to a or down round, we're yeah. crazy uh, but I think Amy is has some sense to it. Uh, I think there's a, a power to, to be able to hold the line with our tuition. Um, and that would be the 16,950, not increase that. That's below the state's allowable. Um, and uh, and we're holding the line. So I think that has some merit and you know, we could do anything we want, but I think I'm leaning towards keeping the tuition rate that we currently have for the for the FY23 um, 
budget year. Uh, this is Robert. I uh, would agree. Uh, other other organizations, other towns um, appreciate stability. And even though they're you know they're they're going to have to pay pay it anyway if the if the parents select us, it still builds better um, you know better relations in general. Are we ready okay. to move on this? Well, then I'll make a motion. <laughs> Go for it. Yep. I'd like to make a motion that uh, uh, the ARSA district F announced tuition rate for FY23 be $16,950. Do we have second. a second? Robert second. Uh, any discussion? I'll do a roll call. Uh, Amy. Hi. Christine. Aye. Robert. Aye. Patrick. Yeah. Aye. Uh, yeah, so, what are we doing? Aye. Public Ethan. Aye. Public Thank comment. you all. Thank you. Thank and you. now I don't have to change Janet, the revenue budget. Got anything to say to us? <laughs> Woohoo! I, I do not have anything to say. Uh, yeah, what are we doing? Public comment. Thank you. It was nice to look at your comments through the meeting. Thanks, Janet. Thanks. Janet, uh, got anything to say to Good. us? Then I think we have no new hire. Uh, I, I do not have anything to say. Uh, but future agenda. Item. Thank we you. It was nice to look at your horse. The We're mailer, definitely the the meeting. Thanks. And the uh, special funds. Right, the uh, funds reserve funds. Good. Then I think we have no new hires and resignations. And we'll actually take some action between them and that. Uh, Good. But uh, future agenda uh, items. We already got. Day. The We're mailer, definitely Tuesday, February 1st, and the uh, special the funds. Right, the Regular reserve funds. Reserve and funds. Mission and vision. Mission and vision. And we'll actually have taken um, some action between them. And Good. Uh, next meeting date is Tuesday, February 1st, 2022, at 6.30. Uh, Good night, everyone. Thank you all so much for your work. Cool meet.